episode of Left Hand Reviews, and what a better way to start it off than a game that doesn't get a lot of love today. And that game is Tikal. Tikal was released in 1999, won the Spiel uh, Game of the Year uh, in the same year. It's two to four players, plays in about 90 minutes, uh, depending on uh, the number of players and their rate of analysis paralysis. Um, it scales pretty well. Uh, and uh, but it gets a lot more aggressive as you have more players. So let's dive in, take a look at it, and I'll tell you what I think. So as you can see, Tikal comes in a pretty large box. Um, here is a comparison to uh, Sakigahara, which is in a standard GMT size box. So it's about twice as wide. Now the great thing about Tikal is the insert. They did a fantastic job designing the insert. Fits uh, everything exactly how you'd want it. So you have your four player colors here. Game board, uh, which is basically hexes superimposed over a jungle. You have all your various hex tiles down here on the side. Um, these are temple tiles here. Your instruction book underneath that. You have your uh, player cards here. These, uh, This is an action point allowance game, so this tells you uh, each of the actions you can take and the number of points out of that allowance they, uh, they consume. And then you have uh, treasure tokens here, uh, which you use to dig up treasure. But what you'll see here is the board, uh, like I said previously, is kind of hexes superimposed over a jungle. Everyone's going to be starting here. This is where our expedition will start. All the players are given a bunch of these uh, hexagonal um, uh, meeples, so to speak, these hexagonal pieces. The small ones are your expedition members, and there's one big one, which would be the expedition leader. The difference is that the expedition leader counts as three expedition members, which uh, I'll explain why that matters in a, in a minute here. You also have these uh, tents or camps that you can place throughout the board, which kind of allows you to fast travel from uh, location to location. We also have several of the tiles here. They're uh, all numbered on the back from A to G, so when you set the game up, you uh, divide them into each letter and then shuffle them and then stack them on top of each other. So they're in order, but you don't know uh, in what particular order for each letter. We also have the treasure tiles here. Um, these will come up when we uncover some treasure. And we have some temple tiles up at the top. Um, as the game progresses we're going to be uncovering temples and on your turn you have the option to continue excavating the temple and the more you excavate the potential more points that it's worth. So these are numbered from 2 to 10, and you can see that they kind of max out at 4 and 5, and then the supply dwindles when there's only two nines and a 10. So on your turn, you have several different actions that you can take. They're all outlined in this uh, handy-dandy uh, card here. Basically, you have 10 action points per turn. And each one of these actions uses a number one uh, number of action points. You can see the dots on the right hand side here tells you how many action points each action uses. So the first thing that you're going to do on your turn is draw a terrain hexagon tile and place that on the board. This is a blank one. Now what you need to do is then place the hexagon adjacent to another existing hex, or at the beginning of the game, adjacent to these three. You always have to place a hex uh, in, a, uh, in an orientation in which a player can legally travel to it, so you can't put it in such a way that it's impossible to get to at that time. See the hexes all have some square stones on them. The stones uh, indicate, uh, you can think of them as steps, and the number of action points it takes to move one of your expedition members from that hex to the next hex. A legal placement of a tile um, means there has to be at least one stone on either of the hexes 
um, when you place the tile. So for example, if this tile was out here, let's say later in the game, this would be an illegal placement because there's no stone, there's no way to get from this tile to this tile. So let's say I place this here. Now what this is saying is later in the game, once I have some of my expedition members, to move one expedition member from here to here, it costs one action point because there's one step here. I'm unable to move from here to here because there is no stone. So if I wanted to get here, I would have to go back here for one, and then here to three. So to move from here to here is a total of three action points. So you have a total of 10, you can divide that between any number of your expedition members. Remember the expedition leader counts as three expedition members for the ter uh, purpose of majority, but he still only counts as one for movement, so that would only cost one. The other actions that you have are you can bring a new expedition member into the expedition. This can be done by bringing him into the start location here for one action point. Or if you have any of the tents placed, any of the camps, you can bring them directly into that hex for one action point. So let's reveal a couple more tiles. This is a treasure tile. When you place this, after it's placed, You'll immediately place the number of treasure um, discs equal to the number of gold treasure pieces. So in this case, four. Now what you can do on your turn is if you have a expedition member in that hex, you can spend three action points to excavate that treasure. You can only excavate two treasures, a maximum of two treasures on your turn, so that would be using a total of six action points. But you must have one expedition member in the hex for each treasure that you excavate. So if you just have one member in there, you can only excavate one, even if you have the action points necessary. So let's say I'm here. Well, let, let's start here. So I, on my turn, I might say one, two, because of the two stones, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I take these treasure tokens and they go back on my side of the board and these will count for scoring. There are several different designs uh, and there are a maximum of three um, identical tokens for each design. This is a tile, a terrain hex rather, that has a temple on it. So when this is placed, you can see this one has a number two on it. So for each expedition member that I have in the temple hex, I can choose to excavate more of the temple. And we can see that costs two action points. And again, similar to the treasure, you can only excavate two uh, levels of the temple at a time and one level uh, for each uh, expedition member that you have there. So let's say I'm here and I want to excavate this temple to level three. So I would spend two action points, take a three, and place it on the temple. And then let's say I wanted to use another two action points to uncover the level four. And that would be the most I could do in that turn. Um, at, on this particular temple. And I can spend my other action points anywhere I please. Maybe move some more guys around. I can bring some more in from the board into the expedition uh, entrance here. And that's that. Another action that you have is you can see here the swapping of treasure tiles. So for three action points you can give an opponent one of your treasure tiles or treasure tokens and take one of theirs. They cannot refuse this, but the trick is you cannot take a treasure tile from someone that has more than one of that identical tile. So for example, once you have tiles that are paired up or tripled up, they're safe. You can only 
give away a single of yours and take a single from somebody else. Next action here is building a camp. That costs five action points and you simply place a camp in a space on the board that contains your expedition members. Now that that is there, you can travel for one action point between the start and your camp for one action point. You can bring people directly into the board or directly from the supply onto the board for one action point. And also you have two camps so later on in the game you can hop between them and back to the start if you so choose. And the final action of the game, which is the real meat of it, is putting a guard on your temple. So at any time that you choose, you can put a guard on a temple. What happens there is that if you have majority in that hex, so let's add some orange on here. Let's say I wanted to put a guard on this temple. Right now I have majority. The reason, because my expedition leader here is worth three, plus one is four. Well, they only have three. So I'm going to choose to place a guard. So I will take one of my expedition members, in this case I'll just use my leader, and you put him on top of the temple. Any other expedition members of your color that are on that hex are removed from the game permanently, so it's expensive. And it also costs five action points, so you need to be careful. Now, that temple is permanently mine for the rest of the game. Why does that matter? Well, that has to do with scoring. So when a volcano tile is drawn, what you're going to do is set it to the side, and each player has uh, one turn as per normal, and then they score after their turn. So what you're going to do is use, let's say I was going first, black, and black would conduct its 10 action points and then score. You score points for any temple space where you have majority, or if you put a guard on the temple, you automatically score that points as well. So if I had a couple guys here, a couple guys here, let's say we had this situation. In this case, I would score one point, plus four points is a total of five points. I don't have majority here because Orange has their expedition leader here which is worth three and I have only have an expedition member which is only worth one. Now during this turn remember you score immediately after your turn so if I knew it was a scoring round and this is how it was at the beginning of the turn I could move more guys in here to get majority so I could then score it. And then if Orange was taking their turn after me they could subsequently come in and bring more guys in to get majority and score that same space a second time. The only time where that's not possible is when you place a guard on the temple. That is always yours. Nobody else can ever have those points. Also, you score for your treasure pieces. For each single treasure piece that you have, it's worth one point. If you have doubles, each pair is worth three points. So, and if you have all three of a particular type, you get uh, six points. So you will move your cube up the score track, and then the pl player that drew the um, volcano tile will place the volcano tile and continue with their normal turn. So let's just quick run through a game turn. First thing I'm going to do is grab a tile and place it. Now I'm going to take my 10 action points. So let's assume that I'm black. I might do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Ten. Now orange would go. They draw a tile. That's an expensive one. With three 
locks. Now if this was placed here, that's very difficult to get to. And there can be some screwage here. You know, protect yourself. And orange may do this. They're going to uncover that for two. Three, four. Five, because they're bringing in at a tent. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and bring one more in for ten. So play continues like this until the entire board is filled up with all the hex pieces. And at which point there is one final scoring round and the player with the highest score wins. I believe there are three uh, volcanoes throughout here, so you'll have a total of, I believe, four scoring rounds. Don't quote me on that. So that's really a typical game of to call. Um, you gotta be careful because if you have a lot of uh, people on a particular hex that you wanna cap off and put your guard on, you're gonna lose all the other, um, all your other expedition members that are on that hex. So there can be a lot of fighting for that hex, you know, because if you can only cap it off if you have the majority. So opponents may be placing more and more of their expedition members in there not only to gain majority, but to prevent you from gaining majority. And they know if you do risk majority and decide to cap it off by placing a guard, you're going to lose all your expedition members in that hex. Uh, expedition members of the opponents are not lost. Also, as I kind of uh, mentioned before, these temple tiles are finite. So there is only a couple nines and one ten. It's very, very hotly contested. Also, you cannot jump levels, so if all the 7s get depleted, and the 8s, the 9s, and the 10s are still there, or some of them, they can no longer be used if there's no place left to put them. Because um, if you have knee, if you have a 6, but there's no 7s left, too bad. So again, it's, uh, it can be a tense game. You gotta be careful uh, with analysis paralysis on this game, uh, because a lot of people will sit there and stare and plot and can't figure out how to use all 10 of their action points. Another big problem uh, with uh, how this game, uh, or how people tend to play this game, or problem that can arise from playing this game, uh, excuse me, is that they will start doing actions and counting their points and then decide they don't want to do it and try to back up. It can be difficult and confusing. Where did I, where did I move this expedition over? How many points did I use? It, so it's really important to plan your entire move in advance before moving your pieces. So have all 10 of your action points ready to go because it's really hard to take things back and back up with all the little pieces on the board all over the place. This is one of the first games that I learned how to play um, when I got into board gaming um, a few years ago. And I have to say it is an exceptional game. It's very accessible. Gorgeous artwork. The pieces are phenomenal. Um, nice, uh, thick, sturdy tiles. The board, uh, uh, sorry, the box insert is excellent. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, it, the game is accessible. It's easy to teach. I almost, it's kind of a borderline gateway because it does take a little bit of a, uh, can cause, again, that AP can take a little bit of thought, but it's so easy to get uh, new players in. And it's such a great looking game that um, they'll like to play it. So those are my thoughts. Um, pick this game up. Play it. It is an awesome game. Um, I'm not sure if it's still in print, um, but I'm sure you can pick it up in a trade, in a math auction, um, a math trade rather. It's awesome. Play it. Ah, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, there is a variant to this game, um, an auction variant. It is official. It's in the instructions, and it uses these little cardboard auction tokens. Basically, what it's for is uh, reducing the luck of drawing the random tiles. And uh, basically, what you do is you place face up the number of tiles uh, equal to the number of players in the game, and you'll auction the tiles off. Um, and the player that wins the auction will play that turn. So. That's a variance. I've never played it, um, but 
I really like to keep it simple and not bring in the auction variant um, because uh, I find it a lot more fun without it. So uh, leave some comments if you have played it, if you, which version, uh, which variant you prefer, the original or the auction, and uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.